Everybody, All welcome right. to the Aubrey Marcus podcast. I'm here with my brother Parangi, Woo-woo. and we're here because oh, almost two years ago, we took a little journey into the jungle, a little 16 day jaunt, two different ancient plant medicines, but one in particular, um, we made a documentary about, and that documentary is called Ayahuasca, with our other brother Mitch Schultz and Corey Allen and a lot of other people pulling together for this film. Yeah. And finally, now. After a lot of love and sweat and hard energy and mental energy and financial energy and all forms of energy utilized, <laughs> we're coming north towards the finish line. And one of the coolest parts about it, in my opinion, is the soundtrack that this man right here laid down. So we're going to get into all that. We'll talk a little bit about the film. We'll talk a little bit about how the music plays in the film and just the process of creating music that's designed for you know, of course, for listening enjoyment, but also for a deeper purpose. So Mm. welcome, brother. Thank you, brother. Yeah, it's good to be back. Mm -hmm. Really good to be back. No doubt. So you've, you've had experience with ayahuasca before that was part of your lineage. Yeah, your part of your background. When I was younger, growing up, um, yeah, one of my my first ceremonies with it was with the Union de Vegetal. Later, my mother actually became baptized in the Santo Daime Church in Brazil. So there's two main kind of groups in, in Brazil. And it's a different lineage than the Peruvian style, mm-hmm. which is more of like shamanic, uh, in the dark, solo journey, one person, ayahuasquero, you know, the road man or road woman kind of holding space and singing the Icaros. In Brazil, it's lights are on, you're all standing, and, you know, there's still the mestre and people holding space, musicians, usually plural, playing, mm-hmm. and everyone usually is, is singing songs along, like kind of hymns, the inos, they call them in Brazil, which are like the Icaros in a way. Yeah. But it's everyone singing together, and everyone knows the word, and is dancing. Usually, men and women are separated, but it's like this, yeah, in the light, and yeah. the others like in the dark. So it's a really yeah. interesting contrast. And instead of calling on, you know, Papatua or Madre Ayahuasca or Otorongo, you're calling on Jesucristo. <laughs> Jesucristo and, and, and the Orishas. There's a yeah. whole African element in it. Yeah, so in- interesting, but still, yeah. you know, very powerful. I hear Ooh. from you know across the board, just kind of a different way. Yeah. To guide the ceremony. So you've totally. had that. And then, but the way that we did it was the other way. You the know, shamanic way. The shamanic is, way. Yeah. The deep, deep, powerful journey. And Going into the dark shadow. You know, mm-hmm. I've told those stories a lot of times. It's the story where, um, you know, ayahuasca, I was continually tracking these elements inside myself until finally it broke me down to the deepest element and took away everything from me beyond death, my own, my own specialness. And it told me that. I was water borrowed from the ocean that the ocean forgot and allowed me to release that final <laughs> element of specialness before building me back up with the health, help of my grandma. So I've told that story many times before, and that story will come out again in mm. the ayahuasca documentary. But a really powerful medicine. You know, we're sitting there with two shamans, Gandalf the White Wizard, <laughs> yes. Don Howard, and yes. then uh, Don Robert, the crazy wood elf with tireless <laughs> energy. He was leading ceremony all night and then you know, giving bentiadas with flower baths in the morning. In the morning, the crack of dawn. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The song, the song by which we will never forget. <laughs> and then you just wake up every morning hearing that. And somehow you just kind of know everything's all right. <laughs> you like, oh, that. we made it. <laughs> we made it. Yeah, We're just, still alive. Just cold ass water and flower Ooh. petals. <laughs> Yeah, and the smell of mapacho smoke. Yeah, yeah, so beautiful. That that probably of all of all the visions and that one, that specific smell, like sensual state of being is like imprinted, and truly, yeah. and, and that's what it does, right? It seals the energy of the whole ceremony. It's not over <coughs> until that flower bath. Yeah, I remember. You know, I've had a lot of friends have gone down to Spirit Quest and experienced it and you know some it's such a heavy brew that some are just flying still through the morning <laughs> so they just like crawl over <laughs> to the sound of don robert giving the flower bath like please put this to an end you know? and then the cold water and the ventiata everything kind of caps it off and hopefully allows you to get some breakfast in you if you can get it right yeah that's, yeah if you can get it in. it depends on the body that's then that's such a re- great reminder like how the medicine is has its own consciousness and it knows how to work with each person yeah and it's never the same like for as many stories as many journeys you can work with it you know even the shamans where you're 
thousands and thousands upon thousands of journeys. It's always different. I'm in a fortunate position now that I'm, you know, people identify me with my ayahuasca story. So anytime anyone has a story, I get to hear it. <laughs> and it's just, it constantly blows my mind how, you know, how many stories I hear of these just mm. powerful, incredible things that have happened, you mm. know, like breakthroughs that you could only hope for and imagine in another modality just coming through where healing past trauma with your family or showing yeah. all different fractionated elements of yourself, getting over your fears, really lasting, mm. powerful things. And, uh, you know, that's part of, partly what we tried to show in the documentary, but also, you know, the other message is it's not a panacea and it's not for right. everybody. I mean, this is, right. this is trial by fire. This is, <laughs> let's put the sword in the fire. Let's, ha let's add the hammer, let's add the heat and hopefully the steel melts and folds and it gets stronger. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, you know, you work out all the impurities and you take away everything. But, you know, it's possible it could break. <laughs> and then you're going to have to take a lot more time, you know, back taking care of the pieces, mm -hmm. melting them back down and making another sword. It's, it's a trial by fire. Right. It, I think that's, that's really true. And it's, it's interesting how the different lineages handle it. And, you know, like Don Howard, obviously, Spirit Quest, like he does that whole intake where he tries to, like, screen out people that probably might be at risk if the, this may not be their medicine you know right. and i think he does his best but a lot of the lineage they don't do that they don't take that due diligence or try to like you know it's mm -hmm. kind of like come on there's some cause right. i think there's something to be learned by that fire no matter who you are right and that's yes. that's that's something really powerful you know in brazil in the church it's like you have a little bit a microdose sometimes you're little so it's like instead of going having your communion you know that's like a weekly ceremony that you partake in and so it's like to think about how in developmentally we as we're growing to have that ally plant you know working with you from the time you're little it's, yeah it's real different right than versus we're coming out of the city out of new york and i want to go down and have this yeah. journey and yeah i may not be <laughs> in a good space to even be able to know what that is no doubt of all these instruments here that mm. you have what what gives the most Brazilian sound? Let's give the people a little flavor. A little of, flavor. A, a little flavor. Of, oh, man. You don't really have much here. I, I've got one. You got one? Oh, All right. Yeah. Well, let's bring it out. Let's, yeah, yeah. let's start here. Let's start here at All the right. roots then. The roots. Let's go back to Brazil. Uh, yeah. So this is, uh, this instrument known as, is, is known as a rebolo. And the rebolo is uh, it's played in pagode in a style of samba from Brazil. And you know, I, my other hat. $100 for anybody who spells those off the bat right now. <laughs> Honor system. <laughs> hebolo, hebolo. So no, he the one with the P was the, what, the hard one. What was that? Pagodi. Yeah, okay. Good luck. Good luck, everybody. <laughs> Who knows Pagodi? Look it up. <laughs> Brazil <It's, which> Brazilians, <laughs> you're disqualified. <laughs> Brazilians, disqualified. So Pagodi is backyard samba. So if you've seen the big samba schools, Carnaval, right? That's like, that's where you can see the big drums you use the, the sticks. Yeah. Hebolo Pagodi is like, how do we, t when you take that energy, that music into the backyard with like the barbecue, shuhasco, you know, and it's yeah. like, and that's then you go to hand drums and so this was invented for that but i also use it a lot in ceremony and i've kind of developed different ways of playing it and it's on the album and it's a lot of the heartbeat that people are going to mm -hmm. hear in the album the drum and i've played this in in ceremony um and it's just it has well i'll let it speak for itself <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. So a little bit of that, that flavor, you know? Uh-huh. Hebolo. 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 And this is the heartbeat, you know, and, and it's, um, it's interesting how much that can move energy. Something about the low frequencies, it, it moves stuff, it clears the way. And so it's... It kind of speaks to a, a, a subconscious mm. element of our humanity, you know, and I think that's why anytime you dance you know you're moving to that baseline and almost like it draws that out of you you know even if you just let your mind go numb you can just follow that you can follow that with the, like the big guttural movements that you make and then you can follow the other movements with the other extremities <laughs> of your body and allow your instrument to get played but the drum 
is the one that that's driving and same yeah reason why you know when you're on a military march you know they brought drums seems like oh no that's a waste why would you bring drums on the <laughs> war well it makes a big difference it's the you know, key it gets right? people in cadence driving and, and yeah. that driving force yeah in in you know in the sound healing work and sound we talk about entrainment mm-hmm. and entrainment is this idea you know the strongest frequency everything else will align to that frequency you know whatever it is whether that frequency is a rhythm or or even a person's energetic right so if someone's really ha- amped up or whatever it kind of gets everyone in a frenzy for instance yeah. but the drum if that's consistent then everyone right their heartbeats will entrain to that sound and that's the idea and so in the ceremony you know being able to bring that when all the energies in the room are kind of frenetic and crazy bringing in the heartbeat you know mm-hmm. and just really drops you into that yeah in all the ceremonies that i've been to there's some kind of thing that keeps pace and sometimes yes. it's the shakapa the shakapa you know, you know which is a more treble sound you know it's like a ch- 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 yeah. ch- but the drum is nice too yeah and i yeah. missed it down in spirit quest right because don, yeah. don robert really he follows them in the mestizo lineage he used shakapa and voice right mm-hmm. but it's um which is really powerful in its own way it's like i've had this whole trip about that journey it literally of like insight of how the shakapa has all these low fre- like it it's only these high frequencies, but when you're deep in the medicine, it's like you fill in all the low frequency. <coughs> yeah, it's like that makes it, sense. I hear it all. It's all there being played. And I'm like, oh wow, like it's it's underneath it, and mm-hmm. his timing is so perfect. And the, there's a there's a cadence, a swing in his in the way that shakap you know, yeah. shh, 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 and just you know, in the way his words that it's not. It sounds like it's just a simple beat, but it's not. There's this whole funky polyrhythmic thing happening mm-hmm. that is deep. And uh, Corey Allen. Corey and I have, have, have really laughed about it, like back and forth, because we're going back and listening to the recordings and as I was making the tracks, listening over and over again, and it puts me back into ceremony, just listening to it, you know? I'm like, what is it about that? Yeah. It's, it's I've played that. <laughs> I've played Don Roberts. He called it the White Album. <laughs> the know, White he, Album. He gave up his, his album of Icaros, and I played it for Rogan, I played it for Brandon Schaub, and a variety of people, and it, it makes an impact, you know? Yeah. It's something... It was created by the plants. I mean, in their in their lineage and thinking, these songs were given to them from the plants. Mm-hmm. You know, it's that was exactly. their that was their muse. This was the the translation to them, and the songs actually carry the medicine. And even these patterns, like we have here on like, the desk, this is a visual representation of, of an, those songs. Of those Icaros. Icaros. Each one, each stitch represents a different plant, and it may not even be Aya or the plants in Aya, right? Like it could be Ajo Sacha, like the garlic, the jungle garlic, or yep. Mapacho. And so they d- did a dieta with mm-hmm. each of those plants, and then the visions would come of the of the actual pattern. Yeah, lopuna, all of these different trees. Oof. That's uh, <laughs> you know, you just you hear them repeated, and then sometimes the animals, you know, there's and then jaguar animals. icaros, yeah. and then there's yeah. butterfly Otorongo. icaros. Yeah, and yeah, mariposa is yeah. like super strong, man. Really, and, really cool. And so all like the shapibo, like this print right here, right? So the shapibo prints, their lineage is literally how to the stitch, then take that and put it into a weave that represents a song, that represents a plant. And all that medicine is transmitted just by being around the frequency of it, whether it's coming to you by ingesting it or seeing it or listening to it. It's mm-hmm. pretty, like that intelligence, like that's so advanced, right? Like yep. even modern day, right? Just how we experience media in all those different senses. Very few people are hitting it on all levels. Yeah. And, and the technology they use is called the dieta. And, yeah, that's <coughs> which translates to diet, but it doesn't mean diet. It means something <laughs> dramatically different. And what that is, is they're actually inviting the spirit of that plant to take root inside their own, what they call their light body in, in loose enough translation. <laughs> right? So the spirit, the, the light body of the plant taking root, actually like taking root and becoming a part of their light body. So becoming a part of their energetic force. So you could take this in this reductionist, materialist way and say, oh, that doesn't make any sense. Or you could just say, look, they're taking on the energy of the plant. But in order for that plant to take root, you have to rid yourself of the human elements. You know, all of your sex drive and the shitty human food and the interaction with other I, wait, people. I don't know if the drive goes away. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No sex. <laughs> just about the actualization of it. Yeah, the drive, that's the constant thing you're up against. Because exactly. right? plants don't have sex in that way. They don't have intercourse. You have to create the most soil-like condition for these plants to hold. And it's what, what earns you the right to get these plants medicine on board. Yeah. 
and they'll diet many, many plants and do them many times over. I've done one dieta and it was one of the most powerful experiences in my life, you know, and I didn't do it in a hundred percent traditional way. You know, mm -hmm. I did it here in the States with a non-traditional plant, the rose, mm -hmm. um, but still one of my greatest teaching experiences of all time. I mean, the technology, w however you want to say it's happening literally or just by thought and just mm -hmm. imagining what that plant is going to teach you either way. Yeah. It's incredibly, incredibly powerful. So powerful. You know, I, it's funny that word technology, you know, we have such a different relationship to what that word means these days. And sometimes I, we forget that technology all stems from this. It's yeah. just an evolution of this, right? Yeah. Fire, for those of you just listening. And like, it's like from fire, it's been birthed and turned into all these things that we make, this industrial world, you know, that makes all these products and things we take for granted. But it all goes back to fire. And that relationship of when the first, you know, ape finally put his hands together and made that fire and discovered, like, took that maybe from a lightning bolt striking the ground mm -hmm. and saw, like, you know, an ember and just like saying, oh, there's a pattern here. How do I make this? Yeah. And then wielding fire m with more and more precision and more and more, you know, wisdom, hopefully, or not. And that's mm -hmm. where we burn ourselves. And I think that's like on so many levels, that metaphor is getting played out today. And this medicine is such, and, and dietas and this whole tradition is like, this technology, man, it's all just this evolution. And here we are going back to it because we've lost our way a little bit, right? No doubt. And so let's getting back to the music, though. You yeah. Know, it's hard to think of ceremony without music. <laughs> you know, it's like it's really integral to this whole process, the right music and for the right ceremony in the right setting. But it's all woven together as part of the experience. I mean, we talk a lot about chakaruno, which is the Quechua word for bridge. You know, mm -hmm. it's a way to bridge from one element to the other. Lots of things are chakarunas. The medicines themselves, like ayahuasca or wachuma, they're a bridge to another level of consciousness, perhaps even to another dimension. Either way, it's a bridge to something wholly other. That is what it feels like. And then, you know, tobacco is called a chakaruna, you know, a bridge between, again, one mindset and one communication to, to another. And music, of course is 100% absolutely that. I mean, yeah. just the other day, I was in a foul, foul mood, and I played just one song, and it was just, it was not a medicine song, this was a glitch mob song, <laughs> you know? And it turned my bad mood where I felt helpless, like, oh man, you know. Mm. All of a sudden, I was like back in control of everything, three minutes later. Like, right. if that's not a bridge, right. I don't know what is. And, right. and that's what the, you know, one of the roles that the music plays in ceremony, you know, it really, guides you to you know to where you're going to go and, and they've cultivated yeah. that over thousands of years to make mm. the right bridge for the right medicine right at the right moment at the right moment that's a key and silence is another form of music huge the medicine. jungle doesn't actually ever permit it's silence. never silent <laughs> it's never truly silent right you know it's its own music <laughs> that plays <laughs> Yeah, I remember that being in ceremony and literally the sound of the rain when the rain came up in one of those long pauses. And it's just like I could see and hear every single drop hitting the roof of the maloca and just like feeling that water. That's when my whole vision went into this water realm, like what you were talking about, yeah. how we're just bodies of water yep. and just that realization. So it's like it's always something and it might be in your home, you know, the hum of the freaking refrigerator or, you know. Yeah, the, why <laughs> is it that white noise is so comforting to us? Great question. I think a lot of because it masks it, it like it's almost like the constant of ocean waves or the waterfall mm -hmm. like flowing. You know, it's and it kind of it masks all those little sounds and it drops us into into like a, a placid state, like this, this yeah. peaceful place. Or yeah. brown noise. There's also brown and pink noise that people talk about because white noise can mm -hmm. actually be a little agitating. I think right. Cause it's a little. It's, <laughs> it's, a little it's, it's a little higher pitchy and yeah, uh -huh. yeah, it can kind of grind on us what would be the sound of like an air conditioner a fan or something because that's generally what people think of like right now i hear i hear the one in yeah. here right it's yeah. like kind of this kind of this <laughs> <sound here. laughs> it's got lower frequencies though to it there's actually so there's that sound deprivation yeah um like place this. that they've built where you actually get like less than zero decibels or something like that and pe apparently people can't handle it. You can't. It's intense. It's they, really intense. They go, they like freak yeah. out in there. You start to hear your own heart. You start to hear like, like little sounds in your organism. You hear your digestion system. Like it's so dead silent. Wow. Yeah. That's so it's crazy. never really totally off, right? Unless we're deaf, right? And that's kind of, I mean, imagine the people who live with that experience of like, it's pretty profound. Yeah. That's and wild. So all their other senses, because they're not being used, develop and mm -hmm. actually expand. And they become like way hyper, like sensitive to tactile touch or 
and, you know, to smell. Yeah. So it's pretty amazing. And in ceremony, <laughs> you're hypersensitive to everything. To everything. I remember, so I'm coming out of ceremony and it was, it was one of the hard ones, but not the hardest. I think it was number two or number three, mm. where I started experiencing what I call the, the beautiful hell, which was just all the most beautiful visions ever, but I was just so physically miserable and I was tracking such deep, you know, inner shadows that it was hellish. And then you bust out the chorongo <laughs> and it was like, it was, it was like the heavens opened up. It was like <laughs> the most beautiful. I think I even said after you're done, I was like, that was the most beautiful sound I've ever heard in my life. So why don't you give us a taste, a taste of, of the, the uh, of charanguito. Charanguito. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move this mic. Sorry for you guys. That's one of my favorite tracks on the album. What's that? Uh, what's that track? Arcoiris. Arcoiris. Arcoiris, and that translates as rainbow. Rainbow. Yeah. rainbow. yeah, that's that's a special track. You know, I listen to that. It's on you know a couple of my different deep meditation playlists, and that's the one where I know like, ah, oh, everything's all right. <laughs> everything's all right. Yeah. Yeah. It's gonna bring it back. But there's some other, you know, more intense tracks, too. Yeah. You know, that a big driving section in the middle, you're playing um, <laughs> the, the, the mouth harp? Yeah, Dam Moi. It's a, it's a Vietnamese jaw harp. Jaw harp. Yeah. And you're literally going, it's ayahuasca. <laughs> 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 I'm using, so this is like the, the world's oldest or original vocoder. Like, this is before synthesizers and vocoders. The yeah. Vietnamese people had figured it out. And a lot of cultures have some version of this instrument. Um, this specific one is from Vietnam and from the native people there up in the mountains, kind of uh -huh. between you know, Ho Chi Minh and, and Saigon. And, uh, and this, this one is, is amazing because it literally, it takes your voice as the instrument and your mouth is the resonator. And this little thing is just literally traditionally made out of bamboo. And the bamboo flickers in front of your mouth. Basically, your mouth becomes like vibrates the air inside of it. Mm -hmm. It's like, like as if it were like a speaker box. And then you can change the shape of your mouth or your tongue just like your vocal cords do. That's what we're doing, right? Our vocal cords are vibrating in our mouth when we talk. And as we change the shape of our mouth, that's how you hear words right now. Yeah. Whatever you're just like, if, so this basically then amplifies that. So there's a little taste. I remember of it. there's also a scene in the film where Corey's sitting up next to you as oh, you're yeah. busting this out, and he's just smiling ear to ear. He's <laughs> like, look at this little wizard over here. Well, you know, a great, a great, uh, a really beautiful story about that is that you know, um, Don Robert's son, who's his apprentice, mm -hmm. really heard me playing it up on the star deck, right? Yep. And was just like, what is this thing? And he came over and just really befriended me. He was just really touched. He's like, man, and I checked that out. And so I you know, mm -hmm. showed it to him and he started playing it. He was the strong silent type too. He was so super, that was, that was totally, there's not a word out of him. He suddenly yeah. opened up and lit up, right? Yeah. And so, uh, so I showed it to him and he ended up, he's like, can I borrow this for like a couple of days? And so I like, I let him have it. And um, it was really beautiful. At the end, I, I gifted it to him. I yeah. just felt it like, cause he, he, I could tell his dad is obviously the singer, Don Robert, yeah. but he's like, he'll sing, but it's not his medicine as mm -hmm. much in ceremony. So I had this total intuition that this is going to be an instrument that he would develop yeah. when he leads ceremony, you know? Cool. So a little taste of that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
That's so sweet. So there's a sick track on there on <laughs> on the playlist. And one of the cool things I like about this soundtrack is, you know, we made it for the film and we made it to go for this ayahuasca experience, but you can listen to it in any different situation. Yeah. I mean, yeah. it's you've taken kind of a lot of the power of that medicine and the power of that journey and translated it into music, but that music doesn't need the journey or doesn't need that to still have an impact. You know, it'll bring you to wherever you need to go. Just like you were explaining, you know, with the medicine, the medicine has a wisdom about where you need to go. The music, you know, especially coming from these instruments and coming from your heart, coming from where it came from, will take you to where you need to go, totally. you know, in this way. And I love that you say that because it, it really was very intentional. It's like making this, when you asked me to do the soundtrack, I was like, I had no idea. You know, I, I was down there with you guys in the jungle and I, I brought some instruments and I was doing field recordings in the forest. I was recording every night after ceremony, like just for myself. I had no idea that, that those recordings would end up being the bed of the whole film. Yeah. And, you know, and I used those in the tracks. And, and when um, you asked me to do that, I sat and I, you know, I meditated, prayed a lot about it. And it really came to me that I needed to bring those sounds and weave an experience that could stand on its own outside of the film and take people into ceremony, take them through the different gateways, if you will, energetically, like you would in, in a night sitting in the jungle with mm -hmm. Don Robert or, you know, with any curandero. Yeah. And so that way you can kind of guide yourself wherever you are, whatever funk is going on, sit back, put on the, the CD and the physical release is seamless. So that means that there's no break or, or fade in or fade out. You know, the digital one will be that because people put it in playlists. But so you can just literally put it on and it's 40 minutes start to finish. You go through different moments of the night in the jungle and through light, uplifting, charango kind of vibe to deep in the shadow with like dig and mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's truly the intention of where this is made. It's, it's medicine. Yeah. It's sonic medicine. Yeah. I mean, so many people have, you know, the their different genres of music that they listen to. You know, I got my hip hop playlist and I got my, you know, favorite rock tracks or, you know, all of these different things they have. But this music, you know, of all the songs that I play for people, you know, when I bring these out, this is something that a lot of people don't have. They don't have like ceremony music. They don't have, because there's a lot of like kind of crappy new agey, you know, stuff out there that's, you know, really is almost grating because the, you know, you're hearing weird, fake synthesizer chimes and you know these angelic sounds that are made by you know some computer somewhere or something like that and you're like Ugh, like keep it but you know having these real instruments yeah. you know played well woven together with real field recordings from the jungle not like yeah. um, let's get that jungle wave <laughs> sound which is sure. re recorded i downloaded this off this like yeah. sharing site or i ripped it from yeah <laughs> right recorded in louisiana or something <laughs> like I, who knows like where it was <laughs> um but yeah the, having all of that truly authentic i think makes a big difference yeah it, there's actually um there's a really good story about that i don't know if i told you about how i i got an eight hour recording of the jungle night um on the last night after we'd finished 16 days of ceremony and I was totally wiped out. We were actually on the Wachuma mm -hmm. and it was the Vilca night. So we had had the experience with the Vilca and we go back to our room. Vilca now. is a snuff okay, form of 5-MeO-DMT, NN-DMT and bufotenine <laughs> that takes you on this 30 minute rocket ship to completely the other side of consciousness. So we just gotten the nails in the head from uh, Don Howard. Oh yeah, and, <laughs> and it burns. Because you have to, it's, it's a snuff, up. so you have to yeah. take it up your nose. And he says it's got to feel like two nails driven up your nose <laughs> <laughs> to know that you got enough. Like, and I'm like, oh god, this is. <laughs> ah, that's fun. Ridiculous. So I, so I, so I go back after for my little death, and I remember, I kind of like after you know coming back and, and feeling my body. I'm like, this is the last day. We're we're like leaving tomorrow after we'd been in the jungle all this time and I'd been so integrated with the sounds there. And I was like, I have to get one more recording, right? And, and Ashley, my partner, is like, what are you, you're crazy. Like, just sleep, rest. And I'm like, I got to do this. And I, I grab my little field recorder and I go out, man, and I hike out way out in the dark, right? In the jungle out there behind the, the, the Maloka. And I find this little spot. I set up the recorder and I, you know, I set it up and I go back and I pass out. And I'm like, I'll just, I'll get up in a couple hours, just take a nap, <laughs> go get it, bring it back, right? So I wake up in, to the sound of rain, epic, torrential <laughs> storm, you know, Amazonian rainstorm. I'm like, 
and it dawns on me the recorder and the birds are out it's sun it's like sunlight and i'm like oh shit. you know yeah. how long has my stuff been out there so i i book out there man to the jungle like trying to remember where i put it to because i was half delirious just <laughs> off of Vilca, right and, and i get out there man and i'm like oh no no it's, i'm gonna lose all my stuff i hadn't transferred it it's all on the little sd card and i get there and i see the spot where i put it man i look over and it's still raining so i'm wet it's still full on totally soaked and there's this big leaf sitting there and I see the two little red lights and the recorder is just under this leaf and there's a waterfall just falling <laughs> off of this leaf, man. And the recorder is still on and I'm just like, it was one of those moments where I really just thank yeah. you, creator. Like, <laughs> oh my God. The chances of that happening, you know, it just really reminded me. And there's been a lot of things throughout this project that have been like, oh, this is being guided. This isn't about us yeah. at all. This is about, we're just helping, you know, guide this all coming out into the, helping the world. Um, and so I, I got all these recordings and What's epic about this is that I got this, I wouldn't have otherwise, I got this eight hour track of the, of the forest from the middle of the night into the morning, uninterrupted. And so you hear, as you can fast forward through pieces of it, and you hear how the orchestra of the jungle changes mm -hmm. through the night. You know, different insects, different animals come alive at different hours. And it's just, I was just, I want to release, uh, you know, I, I think I mentioned to you, I wanted, yeah. I think we got to put that as like a special, you know, Absolutely. thing for our, yeah. Even yeah. if we just put it out on YouTube, you know, exactly. so people can just play, just it, all, play, play it all night and just connect to Gaia, connect to yeah, Pachamama, sleep you know. in the jungle. That's one of the things, you know, the jungle is really, really challenging. It's not, it's probably the most uncomfortable place for me to be on earth. Like, I, I think I'd be more comfortable in the desert, like a really hot one, <laughs> you know, than the jungle or com in the cold or whatever. But, you know, there's some real medicine there, you know, just getting... Because we try to separate ourselves from the earth, you know, to as much as possible. We insulate ourselves with yeah. clothes yeah. and yeah. with shoes, shoes and, and, and tires. And yeah, <laughs> places we sleep and air conditioning. And right. in the jungle, you don't get an opportunity to do that. And you have to just surrender to the fact that everything's alive. Everything's alive. Some of it wants to eat you. <laughs> you know, I had my during that thing, I had my little conversation with mosquitoes where I spoke to the spirit of mosquitoes. <laughs> yeah, I said, mosquitoes, like, what the hell? <laughs> You're the worst. And it's like, hey, man, chill out, monkey. Like, you got plenty of blood. We're just like nature's taxes. We take a little bit. We <laughs> feed it to the other animals. You know, it's all good. We're nature's wealth distribution. Wealth distribution. So ever since then, I have a new found accord with mosquitoes. I mean, obviously, I'm not going to let them devour me if, if I can help it. <laughs> but, man, that's a, <clears throat> the jungle is a, a challenging place. But I think yeah. for anybody who hasn't experienced that, you know, that's the place to go do the medicine. You're drinking the jungle in the jungle. Yeah. And there's something powerful about that. As yeah. long as you have the right guides. Because, right. you know, what? You know another key. thing about the jungle? The law of the jungle is the strong eat the weak. It's not immoral for the strong eat to eat the weak. When the jaguar eats the taper, you know, it's not like, oh, bad jaguar. <laughs> you know, it's just what happens. And the people of the jungle mm. can have that same attitude. Not all of them do. You can mm -hmm. choose another path. Mm -hmm. But you can just have the... Oh, I'm the jaguar. These gringos and gringas, they're the taper, you know, so I'm going to yeah. eat. And that's and it, it doesn't mean they're immoral. It doesn't mean it's well, the wrong way, but I, it, it can I, happen. I think there's a there's a there's a way to, to understand that, too, that it's like that kind of, you know, and I think what you're referring to is kind of this interesting energy now with ayahuasca having gotten so big and kind of more and more people discovering even the work we're doing, getting it out there. Mm -hmm. People are like, I want that experience. So they jump on a plane, they fly down to Peru and it's like, and they don't know, they haven't done their research. They don't know about Don Howard or whatever. They get off the plane. People now, because of the influence of kind of the Western capitalist model, there's this whole thing of like, oh, this is an opportunity to make some money off of people or to take yep. people advantage of people. It's kind of, that's not inherent to the way that they lived in the jungle, un, uninfluenced by the outside world. So we have to remember it depends. that it's, I mean, that there's, it's, still, it's there's still that tribalism, know? though. You know, the, and on tribalism, a, a very, yeah, tribalism will level. say, protect my people, mm. fuck the rest. You know, that's the dark side of that. That's the shadow of it. It's, we share everything. We're here as a single unit in love and connection. But mm -hmm. there's also this like, you know, put your arms out and be like, oh, those motherfuckers over there, <laughs> like, forget about them. And that is, that is a part of our, you know, the kind of the shadow of mm. our, of our kind of ancestry. And mm. I think that can still exist as well. There's, but does, I think what's important is to r remember that that's our moral, our moral ideas about what that means or whatever is, 
really somewhat invalid. You know, we can have our own morality, but you have to look at that and say, all right, you're going into a different culture and a different place and a different mentality. Just have some respect for that and protect yourself according to what, you know, what you want to receive. Because there's certainly some, some white wizards out there as well, like the there's, ones that we've found. Totally. There's, there's wizards on all sides. You've got to watch out for that. The wars between them and everything, oh, right? Yeah, Which no we've doubt. heard with like Hamilton. And, and it's very interesting. I, I think what's at the core though, of all of it, and I think what you're getting at, is really the message of Mother Aya. Mm -hmm. You know, which is, and, and really I think it's a salient message through all indigenous teachings. All of our, like, and all the great, from Buddha to Christ, you know, it's, how do we, how can we be better relatives? Yeah. That's really what it comes down to. They are all talking about the same things. Like, how can I be a better relative, not just to my blood relatives, but to my extended relation with all, all beings, right? Whether that's the mineral kingdom, the plant kingdom, animal kingdom, how can I be a better relative? How can I show up? And if I'm going to take things, how do I take it with respect in a way that's sustainable, right? In a yeah. way that there's going to be some tomorrow. The principle of reciprocity. It's, it's so simple. You know, yeah, it's so that's, simple. And that's that key. was something that the Wachuma taught me you know, over and over again. And even when you go to light, you know, when you go to light your mapacho and you're blasted on Wachuma, you know, I had a couple lessons where, you know, I'd forget to ask, you know, may I have your fire? And it seems something that nobody does really on a day-to-day -day basis. But when you're in that hyper acuity sense and the medicine's trying to teach you something, you know, every time I wouldn't do that, the smoke would go like immediately into my nostrils and eyes. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And, and I'd hear this voice, remember, even when you have, you know, even when it's okay, don't forget to ask permission. You know, yeah. that feeling of yeah. just reciprocity is so, so important. And I think it's ingrained in us. I think we feel that. And mm. so when we tap into that, everything can kind of relax. And we understand mm. that there is this sense of balance. You yeah. know, as much as we give, we'll receive. As much as we receive, we'll give. Yeah. And I think that generally, generally holds when people are conscious. And when we all do it, it's like no one goes without yeah nothing goes without like everything is supported that's i mean that's so such a simple teaching but i think it's like one of the the seed teachings of the whole of the whole planet i mean really from mother aya she's helping wake it up in this way but it's there it's, it's kind of woven into the fabric you know like the ikaros yeah throughout yeah it's interesting i mean like i think bernie sanders is getting po you know getting popular because he has some of that kind of mindset and we feel the inequity and the inequality totally. and but then the idea of having the government tax collectors forcibly take that from somebody, is that a sustainable practice? Mm. You know, mm. I think probably not. That's probably just going to piss people off even more and they're going to become more protected. The more you take something against someone's own volition, the more defense they're going to create against it. And I think yeah. really the key is instead of higher taxes, because then the government just has the money and they don't, uh, clearly don't really know what to do with it either. A way better strategy is to try and access everybody's consciousness, hmm. you know, and show them the principle of reciprocity, bring them to the jungle, let them yeah. feel these lessons. So instead of taking the money that they're always going to push offshore and shelter and move in these variety of different mm -hmm. ways, try and mm -hmm. subvert the system because they're being attacked against their will, instead bring them consciousness mm -hmm. with music, with medicine, and then they're going to want to give it, you know, then perhaps they'll have the para el bien de todos in their heart. And then when you get a billionaire with para el bien de todos in their heart, there's a lot of good that can happen, you know, way more good than, you know, if you just tax them and give it to the government sure. to do some other nonsensical thing with. And I think... And not know, just the billionaires. Not everybody. just the billionaires, everybody. everybody. But, you know, I, I think so. I think the spirit of what's going on is right, but I think the strategy, mm. you know, should always... To me, it always goes back to consciousness. It always goes back to, like... Give them more hugs and <laughs> play the ayahuasca soundtrack. Give them some medicine. <laughs> like, let's get them. Let's get their heart, yeah. you know, alive again. Let's get it warm and feeling and connected mm -hmm. to the earth, connected to each other. Then the money will flow out easily. Because, because then you realize that money is just another form of energy. It's another, all it that's is. That's all it is. And if yeah. you're hoarding all the energy, then it cannot flow. It's like literally. It's yeah, like imagine, you're, like, you're, imagine <laughs> you're in this area, sense. right? And everybody you have like a horde of batteries <laughs> just everywhere there's powers out you have a horde of batteries and you have all these kids going around with toys that don't have batteries right. and like people trying to listen to music but their things out doesn't have any batteries and you're just sitting back smug listening to your own to your own music with just this 
filthy horde, just walls and walls and like a like a dragon's tomb of Duracells, <laughs> just <laughs> just hanging out, just looking around like yeah, sucks not to have music and toys, doesn't it? Everybody suck it, <laughs> you know. And that's what it's like, just hoarding all your money like that. Like it doesn't it doesn't, doesn't make, make any sense. sense. Yeah, you know, got, and so problem. getting that kind of feeling of tribe back, getting understanding that everybody is you living a different life and totally. committing and to the greater good. And we all have our gifts that we're, we're here to bring. Just like I, I think of it as like the analogy of the jungle. It's the, it's the pharmacopoeia, right? It mm-hmm. has everything, everything we would ever need. Things we don't even know we need are there living there. And when you're someone who's grown up in that, you know what plant they talk to you. You have a relationship with them. You yeah. have a, right? Like that's the relative part. And so you're able to know, oh, you're feeling this? You got those mosquito bites? Well, check this out. Here's some ajo sacha. Put this in a little water. Take this internally. Put it on your skin. No more mosquito. You know, mosquitoes are like, I'm not taxing you. Right, right. <laughs> you, know, like, you stink like a beast, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that kind of thing. But that, that knowledge, that wisdom, and we're all like that. We, we all have a gift. We're all like unique plants with our own medicine offering the world. And I think we, it gets lost. We don't even know the gifts that we possess. Mm-hmm. People are out there that have something that they came to this world to offer. And it's just getting totally oppressed. And because they're trying to conform to the way society which was built, you know, out of ignorance and also out of wisdom, but it's been misguided. I think they get lost. We get lost in it, right? Yeah. Well, we get too mind-centered and not heart-centered. Totally mind-centered, out of the heart. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's from the president, right? Isn't that the call you were expecting? Obama Obama is in town tomorrow. He's he's coming. (laughs) Right on time. (laughs) Sorry, Barack. I'll get back to you. We gotta get back to this. I was actually Bernie Sanders. He was calling. He heard us live on Facebook. (laughs) On Facebook Live, he heard us. You know, criticizing his tax. Criticizing something. He wants wants me to come in and be a new campaign advisor. It's gonna be all about consciousness. Don't worry. Feel the burn. I got you. Feel the burn. We're We're down with Bernie. I'm down with Bernie. I think he's still by far the most intelligent of everybody else. Please. But and if Trump goes, uh, what, what are we gonna do, man? Are we moving to the Amazon? <laughs> what are we doing? Like, what are we all doing? Like, that's the. I just, question. I don't, I don't have a lot of faith that the president actually does anything. You Even know? if it's a puppet, though, which I, think, I would rather have someone who's yeah. semi-intelligent at least as our right. puppet versus. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, he's intelligent, but he's <laughs> devious in some other ways. Oh potentially, no, no, you know? no, that guy. Yeah, I'm talking yeah. about Ber- you know oh, Bernie. Yeah, yeah, Bern- Bern- or Clinton. You know, just as far as. Yeah, yeah. It's not a lot of good options. It's not a, there's no. <laughs> it's not a lot of good options, and the system isn't really set up for success. But that's okay because you know what? They're all all politicians are reactionary, and right. I think the key is the people lead and we they gotta, react. And they react, it. you know. And there's enough people, you know, who feel a certain way that are reacting to Bernie's message. So that's why he's able to take it this far. When there's more people that want consciousness, that want yeah. change, and coming from the right place, then that leader will emerge. So. Don't worry about the politics. It's all fireworks and smoke and mirrors. Like, just focus on moving the people around you. The more we get that groundswell of individuals mm. who are ready for something mm. else, who when they hear, yeah, let's stop all Arab immigration, put a wall around everything and put our middle fingers up, they go, God. whoa, not interested. And then, right. you know, then you don't have to worry about that tactic working. You know, it's, it's only working because there's enough people who agree with it. So mm. don't try to change the person who's, on top change the feeling of everybody else around you so that starting those, with those methods don't starting work right here right that's, always with yourself that's the key in order to be of service you got to be fit for service fit you got to take care of yourself first yeah you know and that's a very very good point good correction yeah that's that's it that's good I, we keep getting reminded right brother no doubt no doubt <laughs> let's throw in a little more music here what do you music? what do yeah. you got here let's get a little let's see what else we got here there's a uh, oh man so one of one of the really uh really special instruments here. This is a sampoña, and it's also known, you know, in, in the States we call it uh, a pan flute because it looks kind of like the Peter Pan flute, you know, um, or the know pan Peter pipes. Pan flute is from Pan the Seder. Is that's where it originally, right? Yeah, from Pan, that, the archetype of the pan, right? Yeah. Yeah. A little half goat, half, half man playing his flute and exactly. humping women. <laughs> is that what the satyrs did? That's what they did. That's what the satyrs did. I don't know. I mean, I, I'm not a satyr. <laughs> I'm not. I can't speak out of personal experience, but uh, you know, I did read enough mythology. That <laughs> well, you know what's really interesting to go back to what you were talking about reciprocity, right? Is the sampoña, right? It, it comes from the Andes traditionally, and it's made its way throughout. You know, it's, it's you can find them in the jungle too, and and it's made out of the the bamboo, but they'd use different different uh, 
materials. But traditionally, the way it's done by, by the Quechua and the Aymara tribes is that um, you would have like a scale. Think of like a note scale, right? Like a bunch of notes that make up your melody line of a song. But no one person would have all the notes. So one person would have half the notes, the other person would have the other half. And so traditionally, when they played their songs, it was all about them playing interlocking parts. Mm -hmm. So like, I could only play half the notes of the song, and you would have another sampoña, and literally your breath breathing in between my breasts, we would literally complete the song. And so you'd hear like these back and forth, tu -tu 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 -tu, you know, these different notes going back and forth, and literally like living, expressing in real time the notion of reciprocity, like how we're interlocking and we're all connected. So it's Very really... Cool. Really powerful. So this sampoña in particular is a unique one where I have all the notes, and this mm -hmm. is in the situation when you're you don't on. You have a lot of people you run into <laughs> that, that know how to play it. Right? sampoña, especially yes. in the <laughs> desert where I live, right in the middle right. in Sedona, like in the Red yeah. Rocks, which is is a whole other trip I'll talk about. But uh, this is a little taste of of that sound. <laughs> interpretation <laughs> oh oh a little remix for you just <laughs> that's <for> awesome <laughs> just <laughs> that's really cool sampoña so it's a uh, yeah the pan flute in this instrument it, it takes so much breath you got to be breathing like we talked on mm -hmm. the last time i was here talking about the belly breath yep this is another master teacher that will make your butt do that, or you're going to fall over and pass out because you're not breathing. <laughs> yeah, I got to bust out that ditch tonight before we hang out just to, just to brush up. Yes. I mean, I've been practicing every day, Parangi. You know? uh -huh. I've, been, uh, I've been really working we're, on it. We're that. due for our, our checkup. What's <laughs> yeah. up, Bob? <laughs> that circular breathing is really pretty challenging. And if anybody hasn't tried it, it's, they've actually found a lot of practical purposes for Ton. it as well. Like learning to play the ditch, doing circular breathing, which yeah. is where you're breathing out through your cheeks and then inhaling through your nose actually prevents like certain forms of sleep apnea and snoring it, it will reverse apnea biggest thing sleep apnea i it's mean crazy yeah you won't snore anymore the one thing that my, my lady can't complain is i don't snore at night <laughs> <laughs> i'm trying to get her to play dude actually cause, cause oh, <laughs> she, oh, pa she oh. passes out before me i'm like oh no <laughs> <laughs> so yeah definitely do yourself a favor and everyone around you Play a dig. Yeah and, yeah, and not even, if you don't even get to circular breathing point, just starting to play it will strengthen the epiglottis and all that fascia. And there's so many people who suffer from sleep apnea that don't even know it. You know, they're not resting well. And it's like, wow, what a cool way. Instead of getting surgery or having a device in your mouth, right? Yeah. Play, play, play an, an epic instrument. instrument that will literally, like, transform your life. There's so much that can be done with breath. You know, I mean, from relieving stress to accessing different levels of consciousness to giving yourself the proper energy to alkalinity to so many things can be linked to breath. It's this thing we forget about, but really if we focus back on that, yeah, so much power there. I, I like to say, you know, it's the first and last thing we're ever going to do, so why not master it? Yeah. I think that's like, why not? Like, what are we doing? You, you're doing it your whole life, you know? And I literally have clients, you know, who come in and see me that are like 80 years old and have never really breathed from their diaphragm since they were a baby, basically. And they're just like, when they suddenly get that, it's like you see this light go on. They're like, oh, shit. Like, I don't, I don't need all these meds. Or the, da, 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 and like, yeah. transform their life. You know, it's just like, wow. So such a simple, simple thing. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, you hear somebody like Wim Hof talking about, the Iceman talking about the amazing feats that he's done, encased in a block of ice, you know, doing a marathon in shorts in the Arctic, <laughs> <coughs> world records altering his immune function, all of these things, clinically proven methods. And you ask him what he does, he learns from two things, the cold and his breath. You know, like those are the two things. Oh, <laughs> what are you doing to use? Oh, the cold and my breath, you know? Simple it's thing, free. Free. Yeah. Free. 100% <laughs> free. 100% free. And, free. and, and uh, patience, and persistence, yeah. Mastery. Mastery. Yeah. And, and, you know, this is an instrument that'll get you there, sampoña. I mean, music, right? Going back to music is medicine. 
which I think is something we totally overlook. Like you said, it, it transforms everything. The moment you start playing a dig, even if you haven't mastered it, just playing it, right? And you, I mean, you can speak to this. Just mm -hmm. when I've, when we've done our little like lessons, right? And when you sit there, like, how do you feel after just playing it for three minutes? It's like, yeah, that and or the flute, or you know, yeah. like not. I didn't play an instrument my whole life until I went to Sedona, and that's where actually where we met. That same yeah. week that we met, I just picked up a little cheap flute from the gift shop and started playing it. And it was the first time I played an instrument because, at some point, you know, in in school. I was given a recorder and I wasn't particularly good. I didn't have very good instruction. So the, the teacher told me, um, hey, why don't you just not play in our ensemble? Just pretend like you're playing. And I was like, oh, and it just like shunted this thing. It's like, oh, I, I can't play instruments. I, I mean, I can play percussion, right? But anything that had a tone or a pitch, I was right. like, mm, I'm out, you know, because I got smushed. Right. At that, that age. At that age. By that, that agreement person. got formed that oh, I yeah. can't do this. And so many people have had that happen, sure. whether it's music or dance or, you know, all right. of these things. You know, right. my girlfriend, Whitney, you know, she had someone tell her that her voice wasn't good. She used to sing every day that her voice wasn't good. Right. Finally, right. you know, like 15 years later this year for my birthday, you know, I got her to sing for me. Wow. Lay down this amazing track. <laughs> and it's really, really powerful to see these things unlock because... It's yeah. these forms of their truest expression yeah. get smushed the easiest, yeah. you know, and, and the person who smushed her, I'm sure doesn't even remember the conversation was half a bottle of wine deep and was just like, yeah, you don't sound very good, man. <laughs> and all of a sudden, a 15 year impact takes. crushed her mm. ability to sing that random teacher. I don't even know that teacher's name told me I wasn't good at the recorder. It was a little plastic thing that was handed out to every student. Right. I didn't touch an instrument. It's 20 shuts you down. years. That's all it takes, man. It's crazy. And you were talking about that mo our monkey mind, right? How the mind gets in it out of our heart. And there's such a great example. It's like we make this agreement. I can't do this. That self criticism. But you don't say to the bird, "Hey, man, you sound like sh crap. Can you just <laughs> yeah, like yeah, knock yeah. it off?" Right? The bird's like gonna. It's all it does. It was born to sing. And yeah. I really believe we as humans, we're salt, same thing. We were born to make sound with these vocal cords, not just talk, but to sing. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I, I always and to dance. Our bodies were made not to just move us to the desk job, right? And to, from box to box to box, it was made to actually move with, with a little swagger, with a little grace, with a yep. swing, right? And when we do that, just remembering how we feel, like our hearts open, like we remember, we feel more connected to the earth, and yeah, that's absolutely. And and we all have the choice to go push past those barriers. Yeah, you know, I'm leading my first ecstatic dance tomorrow, and you're oh my be god, there. It's not tomorrow on, on Saturday, on but Saturday. The podcast being recorded, so it'll probably already be <laughs> done by the time that happens. <laughs> But it's huge, you though. know, yeah, it's because I found what a great medicine it is. And I had a cool idea of songs and a way to kind of guide that after and going through you and, and Ashley, your partner, put together a beautiful one in Sedona for us. Yeah. Um, and I just know what a powerful modality is. But it's funny talking to different people. You see it. You see them right. like it triggers something like, oh, you mean Close I'm down. just going to dance in the day sober? What? And just what? completely yeah. free. And I, for me, just feeling, you know, feeling that, mm -hmm. feeling all of these barriers unlock, these things that say, oh, if I move my hips this way, I'm a homosexual. <laughs> you know, like these imprints that you get from like other Fear. boys yeah. who are homophobic or you're like, oh, you're dancing gay, uh, blah, right. blah, blah. And then that gets stuck in your head and you get locked into these patterns of what's acceptable, how is acceptable to move, what you can do, right. all of these imprints. And then you just blow through them and you find real, real freedom from there. Yeah. Yeah, and that's people are trying to get a hold of us during dude, this, today. Like I think this podcast, it's, it's impressive. We keep getting the, <laughs> the call is out, man. <laughs> yeah, they want some of this. They want some of this action. <laughs> um, but yeah, so all of these, I really encourage people: open up your voice, you know, move your body, move your body. like intentionally choose to blow through these. Right. You know, blow through these different obstacles. And, that you and, have. and I think the key is you don't need to do it with medicine. Like you don't need to be wasted no. to do it. It's like it is the medicine. Yeah. And when you do it, when you drop into it and it's no longer about what do I look like? What do I sound like? Like this kind of worrying about the other and it's this authentic expression. That's where I feel like that's where spirit happens. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I talk about, you know, a lot of shamanic tradition, they talk about the hollow bone. You know, and what is the hollow bone? It's like for me, when I was making this music, like every time I would sit down in the studio, I'm in this little like the cave, you know, and Ashley would like slide some food under the door, like trying to keep me alive. And I was in there locked up for a couple of months trying to birth this album. And, and it was all about like, how do I get out of the way? Yeah. You know, how can I just hit record and just let my hands, my, my breath, 
you know, translate what that experience is, what that medicine is. And that kept being what, the salient piece that came back. The moment that I wouldn't think about what I was doing and wasn't planned or contrived is the moment like truly magical things would happen. And that's something you learn from playing. And it's, that's one of the greatest lessons of the flute. As soon as I start thinking about what I'm going to yeah, do next. And you fuck up. Yeah, the song the is just <laughs> way, less, way less impressive than yeah. if I'm just out of my mind and just flowing with it without thought, letting that yeah. flow state take over. It's the same with sports. It's the same with anything. Flow state. Anytime you're really at the highest level, your mind's out of the way. The mind's too slow. It's slow. It's too slow. If you have to filter it And it's it worried about that, other shit. Uh -huh. It's worried about what do they think? What does that person think? What, yeah. Do I look good? Yeah. Like, does it sound good? Yeah, does it sound good? Nobody cares. Just like the bird. You got to remember, you got to be like the bird. Yep. I'm just singing because that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to let it go. And there's nothing, and not, nobody can say anything. That's why I came. That's my purpose on this earth. And I feel like we all have that. That's part of our medicine. Yeah. And, and that's, you know, that's, that's really at the root of all of this. You know, it's like this medicine, Aya, what is it Aya teaching us? Exactly that. Because when you're in ceremony, she's got your mind occupied. You can't get stuck in all that, you know yeah. what I mean? Or you're going to be in hell. That's the hell. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's the beautiful hell. And the sure. moment you get out of the way and you, you really surrender, when you go through the little death, is the moment that it opens up. And that's, that's really what, what it's all about. Agreed. So why don't we let that didgeridoo sing a little Speaking bit? Speaking of the didge. Speaking the of the didge. Let's let that thing sing, <laughs> and then we'll, we'll talk about a few details of where people can get the track let's, and what's coming up after that. But let's, let's do it. So this, uh, this is an agave didge, for those that can see it, and uh, it's, it's from the southwest. It actually grows right there where, where we live in Sedona, Arizona. So this is our version of the, of the yigi yigi. Yigi yigi. medicine hell yeah you know well, it's been beautiful brother thank so you so for, for everybody listening we're going to try and on the itunes version for those of you listening live we're going to try and include a few previews of these tracks coming up and um for the first month it's going to be available on aubreymarcus.com exclusively yes. and then we'll try to roll it out to some of the other platforms yeah. but i'm gonna make a big deal about it when it comes out some sick album artwork if you get the actual cd yes. and of course we'll have the digital downloads available too and it's just this is one of those things that I highly recommend you have in your arsenal. You know, whenever you need to drop in or if you're with somebody who needs some help dropping in and you know, this is the this is the C D to bust out. This the is Sonic the medicine. medicine. Yeah, this is the chakaruna to the other. That's it. Whatever that pouring, other is. Pouring the sonic medicine, hermano. Chakaruna. Yeah, no doubt. One way people can connect with us too, we're doing a retreat together yep. at Eden Hot Springs. No doubt. If people want to experience, Aubrey's actually going to be speaking there, and, uh, and I'm going to be performing there. I'm going to be doing a live session of what I do, and I'll be doing that at South by Southwest here, right, for the yoga classes and a couple evening sessions. But this is going to be epic because at Eden, at the big pool, Aubrey hasn't experienced this yet, so I'm just, <laughs> I'm just going to tell you all. It's the largest body, outside body wise, it's bigger than an Olympic-sized pool, hot water. A Geronimo used to bathe in these waters. And you can sit back and be floating in the big pool, like in the middle of nowhere with the whole universe out over your head and listening to these vibrations. This is going to be 
epic, bro. Hence, Epic Eden. And medical weed is legal in Arizona. <laughs> but shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> but you don't need it. You're you going to have the sonic it. medicine, You baby. don't need <laughs> it. <laughs> but, you know. But, you know. <laughs> all the allies. You can diet that with that if you need yeah. to. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah, bro. Check it in a special place. Barangi, my brother, it's always a pleasure. Where can people find you on social if they want to follow you? Just Borangi. Just look up my name. It's uh, on the Facebook. We're on the Facebook. We're on the Instagram. Um, and we're getting the YouTube is getting together right now as we speak. Um, we're going to have uh, music's also going to be available in other offerings all through my website, porangi.com. Um, it's funny spelling, but you'll get it. P-O-R-A-N-G-U-I for those out there listening. Um, and then also... Yeah, we have retreats. We offer all kinds of epic offerings like the Eden Retreat out in Sedona in the Southwest and all over the world. So Aubrey and I, we're going to be collaborating. We got, we got some good stuff to share with this Hell planet, yeah. huh? Always. Love you, brother. That's what we're here for. Love you too, brother. Yeah. And love all you guys. Love you guys. Yeah. Ashe. Thank you so much. Whew. Much love. And I'll be back again soon. But uh, definitely keep checking in with me for the release of this album coming up. <laughs>